My name's Edwina, and uh, I've been doing lettering and calligraphy uh, for many, for many years. So it is a pleasure to kind of give you today an overview on how to do uh, a garden sign that you can be proud of. Now, a garden sign can also be a yard sign. So if you're if you're doing some type of a, a yard sale or you're having a party, uh, it would be a, a great opportunity to kind of put special things in parts of your yard so that you can actually uh, kind of direct people as to where things are. Uh, before we go too far, make sure everybody has a little red ticket and a, a questionnaire. I know people like those filled out. We're here on, on uh, uh, for the uh, education class at the Farmer's Market. So if you have never attended one before, I do welcome you. We have these on Tuesdays and Fridays from 9 to 10, approximately an hour. They're free. And there's a list outside of the different courses we offer. Um, today, my purpose is to give you an idea of what we can use, uh, and one of the things that is very apparent are rocks. Rocks are everywhere. So I brought a couple of rocks that are in process. I thought if you, during the class you might find it interesting to see some of the, uh, the processes to, to make them more finished. When you start off with a rock, you first have to scrub it and make sure you get all the dirt off. And then you have to seal it. And this type of a, a varnish sealer is a, a great tool to use. What it will do is it will provide for you uh, a surface, a solid surface, uh, that the paint will, will not go into. It will also allow the paint to uh, adhere to it. Now I happen to pick this up, up at uh, Jerry's Autorama up in Antioch, but you can get a, I prefer the matte uh, varnish because it doesn't shine. Uh, but if you like the shiny stuff, you know, you, you can just get the gloss. But this will give you a dull, solid finish. One rock that I started, uh, that uh, I really didn't start with a purpose in mind, other than just to say the word welcome, and I was thinking I might have it out by the front door if I, if I like it in the end. Uh, but this, you can see what the color of the rock was when it started. So I used that modeled effect and took a paper towel, just dipped it in water with acrylic ink. Now I prefer the acrylic because it dries fast. It also does not smell. If you have ever used acrylic, you know that you have to keep the brushes wet. You can't let it dry on a brush because it will ruin your brush as a polymer. So if you allow it to dry on your brush, throw the brush out. Um, so you keep water near the acrylic these also are available, they're, they're of fine quality. You could use oils. Uh, you see here that I have various degrees of uh, various manufacturers of spray paint. Sometimes I give it a base, all one color. Just spray paint it all with one color of uh, easily found uh, enamel acrylic spray paint. I prefer the ones that say indoor, outdoor and that kind of gives you more of a, a time frame. But uh, getting back to the acrylic, a little goes a long way on this. A little daub, a daub of um, water onto your paper towel or a sponge, and you just kind of paint. You do not have to be an artist to, to give yourself a background. So the background will be achieved just by putting different colors on it. You can see here that you have reds, you have browns, you have yellows, you have greens, and there's actually in here a very little bit of blue. Can't really see it, but in your, when you look outside uh, around the landscape, if you've ever painted, there's blue in your greens. So the blue will go into your greens here too, very, very lightly. So you give yourself a, a basis here. And then uh, we go ahead and we use uh, wood as well. I was thinking pallets. We have pallets floating around. There's a lot of pallet art these days. Uh, scrap wood. I actually purchased these. These are uh, these are pieces that came pre-cut, pre uh, pre-squared. Beautiful thing. Um, so it just in the the dowel was also purchased. Just glued on the back very simply with a, uh, a an adhesive. That also says that it's weather resistant. So these are the basic 
tools to what you want. Do you want a rock? Do you want a sign that goes into the yard? I have different glues. Uh, so as long as it says it's outdoor adhesive, I'm, I'm good with you using it. Uh, and it will help you to, you can see it dries clear. And uh, it, it just, uh, it should last a couple of seasons. It's actually uh, useful. Now, your red ticket today, Geneva is going to, uh, to actually have uh, pull a red ticket out of uh, the basket. And whoever wins will get this sign. So during the end of the, the meeting, towards the end of it, I want you to be thinking about the winner uh, will get pulled. So you'll have two opportunities to put a message on your sign. My thought process, if I had finished this up before coming in, I was thinking that would make a good door prize. I was thinking you could do welcome. Or you can put your name, whatever you would like to do on this. But you have two boards that you can put your own message on. So if you're the lucky winner today, it's gonna to be your message. So think about what you want it to be. All right, so that will be up here. Now, these ones were sprayed, painted with, uh, with the with, with these spray paints. They were just sprayed over and uh, when we're done, we'll paint with acrylic and we'll varnish it with a clear coat so that the paint actually lasts a while. I want this to be very open, so if you have any questions. Do you have to, did you seal the wood first too? I did not seal the wood first and I debated that and I chose not to. And you can see the variable. Mm -hmm. um, if I had sealed the wood, you would not have had the variable of the okay. paint color. But uh, I wanted it to be more rustic because mm -hmm. I initially thought I was going to put it in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> but then I said, yeah, that will make a good, a good uh, gift. All right, so I think um, a sign needs to be able to send a message at the same time that is legible. So you read the words, but the way that you present the letters will also send a message. So if you think for a minute about your advertising, let's go to a Macy's ad. Uh, they have a lot of white space around them. They're very clean. They're very cluttered. They're not cluttered at all. If you go to a, a company like uh, Dollar General, you're gonna have a totally different look. Now, now keep those two types of ideas in mind as you decide what type of image you want on your sign. So, are you having a party? Well, if you're going to have a party and you do it in a, in a lettering like, like this, this message will actually be something that's gonna be rather formal. You, you don't even know you're sending it, but this is the letter form that gets used on your awards. It's the letter form that gets used when you um, graduate. It's a very important, very solid letter form. So if you're having a party, this is not going to reek, bye, we're having a crazy time. This is gonna be like, maybe I should wear something kind of formal. So that's an important message. If you're having a, a fun party, you want your lettering to be very expansive, very kind of clear as far as the structure to it, but it, it just kind of fits together. So when you're deciding what you want for your for your sign, what type of message do you want as well? So today, you have here a piece of paper that will give you a crash course in how to letter. All right, and at the top, now I have a, I do calligraphy as well as lettering, and the calligraphy pens, if you have ever done them, have a flat base to them. The nibs on the calligraphy pens are usually not cut, they're straight across the board. What that does, it allows you to hold your hand in a way that you can change the angle and the thickness of the letter. So why is this important? Well, if you look here on this page, you will see that one way that you hold your, your pen or your brush, you're going to have a very fat letter form. If you turn it so that it's at a 45 degree angle, it is going to give you uh, more of a thick and a thin. If you go down here to these, I call them snowflakes. These snowflakes are done at a 45 degree angle. So once you um, decide you're going to have a, and, and do a couple of snowflakes to see how the letter will actually work. You're gonna lock your wrist. The greatest failure of letter forms is when your wrists move. 
Pretend you have two screws right here. One on this side, one on this side. This wrist does not move. This is solid. So you, you lock your wrist however you're going to use your pen or your brush, and it stays that way throughout. If you wiggle it, you're going to find that the, the letter shapes actually change from top to bottom. It may work, but to an experienced eye, they're gonna say, that was a great try. Doesn't that look pretty? It might be, bless your heart. Uh, <laughs> but it's the idea that if you want the consistency, you need to lock your, your wrist. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, to show you uh, in a few minutes what, what that will do for actual letters. But um, I want to point out to you, at a 45 degree angle, your thickest line is going to be running on the diagonal. Your thinnest line is going to be opposite to that. And you can see that in the snowflakes here. So as you letter, and this is an example, the lower case here is an example of a 45 degree angle. You can see right here the very thin line with the serif, that's the beginning stroke. And then it comes down, it's got a pretty even base. So it gives you a, a, a discrepancy between the thin and the thick, and that's the beauty of the letter form. So as you letter to go back to this piece of paper, you first decide what you're going to use for an angle. You lock your wrist at that angle, and then you decide your letter angle, your, your uh, letter angle. Do you want it to be straight up and down? Do you want it to be on a slant? Is it going to be something that you want to be creative and fun? And if it is, do you need the consistency of the same slant? If you do not, and if you think about this for a minute, you're going to find that if you have one letter going this way and another letter going this way, and one night not quite as long as the others, it's going to give you a totally different feel than if it's all very orderly. So when you're assessing your, your signs, what is your, what is your visual message? So that's that's kind of an important part of what you want want to come across here. Edwina, yeah? could you pick up the pen or one of your brushes that shows what you mean by locking your wrist at the angle? Yeah, you just I, I will gladly show you. I have some um, here, I have some boards here I was going to use. So, um, these are just we'll go ahead and we'll do the word welcome. A little bit goes a long way. So these should last years. And how long? Oh, um, I might put a little bit more in there, but it will be enough to certainly get us started. So as you probably know, you dip your, your uh, you get it wet first, you spread it out a little bit. <clears throat> you can, uh, if this were being done on paper, I actually have a board. It's a drawing board that the, is at a 60 degree angle in front of me. Very rarely do I do anything down like this, unless it happens to be rocks or, uh, or just rings. So it's usually done up. So uh, if I were to do it uh, like this, I like the 45 degree angle. My wrist is going to, this is not going to move. I can even show you the difference of one moving and one not moving and see if you can determine and see the difference. Now this is one that is not moving. Alright, so now we'll do uh, 
There's going to be a difference here. This is going to be thinner than this because you're, you're twisting, you're pushing. It's going to give it a different weight to the letter. So the idea, I like the consistency that comes with it being, I don't want to say more mechanical, but just it's more sharper. appealing. It's sharper. Yes. More control so you have this, this, um, this wussy. I think it's very wussy. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a wussy person. We don't have wussy letters. <laughs> All right, so um, I would strongly recommend put locking the, the wrist, but it depends upon your message. Um, now, this is probably a fine time, too, to show you the letter angles. You're all familiar, I'm sure, uh, when you get something formal, such as a wedding invitation, you will often have it done in italic calligraphy. Uh, italic also shows up on signs. It's a nice, welcoming type of a, a letter form. It's easy to do if you're first starting out in calligraphy because it follows along with the handwriting. So uh, though it's based upon an elliptical fold. If you really want to know, that's the shape of it. Um, the Roman is built upon boxes, everything in, in full boxes or half boxes. So it's very organized and very uh, proportional. With the italic, the best success of a good italic is to have not just a 45 degree angle of the way that you hold your pen and your brush, but it's also a consistent angle that goes like this. So if you look at the word angle on this sheet, you can see that I have taken a pen and I've drawn a, a very thin line through the word angle at, at different points to show you that if we were to take an actual measurement, that would probably be pretty consistent. So the basis of your letters are going to be the backbones, the, the straightness of the letter. Um, so you're going to want your, your backbones to be on the same angles. So th that's a challenge initially to start with. And a lot of times, if you go to a, to a Michaels or to a Hobby Lobby and you get a, a beginner sign painting, they'll have guidelines that will actually have that built right into it. So it is, so you'll have a, a guideline with lines going like this so that you can follow along when you draw your, when you draw your letters, you can follow along to um, keep it consistent. Also, um, so what we have, uh, so on here we're going to have Okay, and this is all following along on the same angle, so this would be consistent. So, do you have any questions? I know I gave you a lot of mechanical ends to the letter form. Do you have any questions on what I just covered? So, uh, why don't we go ahead, Geneva, and pull the ticket, and uh, that way the person can can uh, think about what they would like to do here. Uh, so, all over here on this one, these two are rocks. Well, this is the basis for it. This is done in a black letter hand, and a black letter hand goes back to the Middle Ages, it'll add some formality to it. This is going to know, just become your girl, a it. more decorative piece. I'm going to... Hopefully that's still together. <laughs> oh, it's not. We're going to glue that back together. Okay. Is this the one you pick out of here? Okay. Uh, the last three letters is 077. Seven. Okay. Awesome. You didn't count it, I'm sorry. Tell her what you want painting on the sign, and she's going to paint the so that's this sign. Uh, you don't have to give it to me this minute, maybe in about five minutes or so. Oh, okay. There's gonna be two pieces on here. We're gonna put this piece back together. And uh, we'll... Uh, Wouldn't it be easier to paint it if it was not attached to the stick? I'm sorry, what? Wouldn't it be easier to paint it if it was not attached to the stick? 
probably. <laughs> but I wanted to stick. Yeah, I wanted to stick together, so it didn't really. Oh yeah, the glue is really stuck there. All right. Well, you can tell I've used this. We'll go back to that later. All right. Okay, so with that being said, the last part on here. Yes, I'm an option. I'll keep trying. Okay, I appreciate that. The last part on here is to decorate. I, I want to challenge you to look at, um, I'm going to say look at books, especially the old books, the old kids' books with Once Upon a Time. You can visualize a, a Walt Disney movie starting like that. Uh, there are all types of decorations that people immediately think, oh, I can't draw. How can I decorate? Hmm. Okay, let's look at those letters really carefully when you say that. Very often, you will find that the decoration, thank you, is as simple as a, a dot or as a line. They go around the letters. They go through the letters. So at the bottom here, we have embellish. The EM is embellish. So you can embellish with uh, lines and dots. You can embellish actually coming here. There was a, a truck in front of me that had a cool design underneath their, their uh, lettering. And uh, they used a triangle. And the triangle is actually offset. So uh, I'll show you here in a minute what, uh, what I mean by that. We'll use the same brush again. Now this is just scrap math board, so it's, so it's just a, a triangle, just like this, and it's offset and creates a very simple decoration. Now you could elaborate it by doing something like this if you would like, stack them. You can go back and put a dot inside all of these. So it can become something that is very, very simple, a very simple stroke, that when you add it together, becomes a decoration. I don't want to hear you can't draw. If you can make a comma, <laughs> commas can become flowers. And let's do it like this. So I don't want to hear you can't draw. You can find simple strokes that can be applied to a design. Now if we were to take and write a word, let's do the word cat, just because I feel like it. Now on top of, um, to make that look kind of fancy, and we're going to do something like this here with the S in a minute. I'm going to take, and I'm doing this all with a very basic brush. I have other brushes. I have smaller brushes. I have round brushes. You don't have to buy a lot of materials. So I'm using the edge of the brush now just to put dots on here. Now, if we decorate this with other colored dots and we add a couple of lines to it, you're going to find out that this cat kind of looks like it's in lights, especially if you did it with yellows and golds. So if we had a thinner brush, which I do, if you back this up, you'll see this a lot as well with the second color ink. You can go back in and you can put a second decorative line through the middle here, or maybe through the back of it. Now I show you these because just something simple like that will give your whole letter form a completely different dimension. All right, so the uh, concept here now is to take this letter form. Uh, the concept here now is to take this letter form that we have and to put some decoration on it. 
So I was thinking the other day that I, I want a third color on this, and I was thinking I might do it with a gold. Um, the idea is that this rock will be planted like that. So uh, the rocks can be flat. This could also be planted. I thought that had a good planting poke on it. But it could also be planted as a stone. In fact, when I, just, when I painted it, I'm assuming it's going to be planted because I didn't bother down there with that point. So if we take some gold here and we take a very thin brush, go through a lot of water with acrylics. Now on top of this you're gonna go I'm gonna go back and I'm just going to decorate this with a couple little dots on it. And we'll add some depth to it. And this will dry probably before we leave here. And a couple of lines. So there's you know there's there's a lot of um, things you can do around your place if you really want to get into this. You can have it be a cohesive look where everything has the same color as your house. You can be completely separate from, from your home. The idea is the preparation of the work that you're going to be doing as well as the finished piece. All right, so just by adding a couple of lines and a couple of dots, and it's not a smooth surface. It changes the, the look of that water immensely. You saw what it looked like initially, and now it has just snazzed it up quite a bit. All right, so person in the back who was a lucky winner, do you have an idea of what you would like to do? Uh, you have two pieces of board, a short one and then a longer one. I think um, like bees welcome. Bees welcome? Yes. I'm creating a like a bee, a butterfly garden. Okay. Yeah. How about welcome butterflies and bees? Okay. Okay. All right. So, do you want it to, we'll glue it before the, the day is out. Um, we're gonna put welcome it on the top of it. Let me get the first. The yellow, uh, because this is your, your place, um, whatever color, but I'd recommend black or purple. Oh, purple's good. Purple's good, okay. You have a purple here. They also have brown, that might be good on the other here in a minute. You probably know from elementary school, purple is nothing more than <coughs> uh, blue and red. If you add a little bit of yellow to it, you get a nice brown. And you can make various shades of it by adding white or black. So how do you measure out where the letters go? Well, I would recommend initially just doing it with a, a, a pencil. Um, I gave this as a demo, and uh, I, in my head I have an idea, but you know, you can't get into my head. You don't have the years that I've had on doing this so I can see about how things fit. So I would recommend taking a pencil and knocking it out in a pencil. This is nothing more than an artist canvas. I think you pick it up for a buck, a buck and a half, relatively inexpensive. It does not have outside durability, but it's great if you wanted to do something just for a, you know, a quick until it rains, or uh, if you're doing something inside, organizing the garage. But if you look at this, you can see the pencil behind it. 
This is the first round of this. This will end up with decoration on the letter. Letters like this, the, uh, the official word uh, for a letter like this, a decorative letter, is a bursa. And this can end up with all types of, of designs around it. So now we're going to do the word welcome. Um, I don't have a pencil, um, but I, I, I'm going to go ahead and just do it anyways. Okay, so. You want it to have some fluidity, uh, so the water, the amount of water on the acrylic will give you the fluidity that you need for the, for the brush to flow. I've got a 45 degree angle here with my hand. Now, when I was studying this, I had a professor who told me, there are no mistakes. You put gold on it and charge them 50 bucks more. <laughs> Something to keep in mind. <laughs> now because this is, uh, this is paint, you'll often have to go back with the second or a third coat unless you put enough on it to carry. If you put enough on it to carry, you may end up with, um, you know, with, with it being kind of blobbish. So I would rather restroke it a couple of times than to have something be blobbish. Ink is not like that, but paint can be. Ink on outdoor signs if it's sealed. Yes, it won't have the durability that the paint will have. It would have to be doubly, I mean, sealed very, very well. Some ink too is waterproof. Uh, you would wash that ink with uh, ammonia rather than water if you used it. But ammonia will take out the ink. So an M is a double N. They're double the width of an. In. So we did this with an italic hand here. All right. So there's your welcome. Just like that. Yeah. Uh, and you know, sure. Yes. There you go. All right. Well, I have a smaller brush than the one I was using a few minutes ago, so I made sure I have the smaller brush today. Now, you can add to this, of course, if you wanted to put uh, flowers on it, if you wanted to just put colors on it. Uh, this one that I did was nothing more than sponging colors. You know, you just sponge one color one over the other. This has the idea, on your idea of bees, be peaceful. I'm going to have little bees drawn in there, and then we'll we'll have uh, some yellow highlighting it. So you've got a lot of projects that are in process. This will dry. You put it up here. And what is that red? All right. Now with the red, I'd like to do it in a different color. How about if we do it in yellows, maybe with a little bit of uh, blue hanging out on it? That sound okay to you? It's on. Okay. very bright. So you can just buy the color that you want too. You don't have to buy every kit. And they have smaller kits. You don't have to buy big tubes. You can, you can, you have options. Okay, so we're going to do butterflies and bees, right? Right. All right. Butterflies, butterflies is probably going to have to take up mouse space to here. So if I get to my blue blob here, and we still have space, I'm gonna put an ampersand, and then we'll put bees through here. 
So this time I want to change the letter because um, I don't want the welcome gave me the idea of an Icala can that has it done with a 45 degree angle and a consistent letter form. This time I want it to be kind of bouncy, kind of glittery. So we're not going to do it as, as nicely. We're going to do it more fine. Now with this, you can add, you can add a, uh, a couple of colors. You can give it depth by putting a second color on the brush. And when the second color comes out, the second color comes out. Are you game on that? I'm okay. I'm game for whatever you're game. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I, want, I think we'll do that. We'll give it a little bit of character. We'll give it a little bit of depth. We'll use the same purple because it's sitting here. And it will look fine with red. So I am not changing my hand. I'm changing the way that the, the letter goes, the, the brush goes to the, to the um, I'm not going to say the paper, but the board here. I want more yellow on this so it's brighter. So this will give it depth that you would not typically get if you didn't mix colors. If you totally hate what you're doing, can you paint over the start brush? Of course you can. <laughs> Keep in mind there are ever never mistakes. This is an art. This is art. There's no. There's different interpretations of what you're doing. I want more yellow. The yellow will give it a little more character. You can get the letters so that they fit together as well, so that they interlock. Um, a P and with the top of the P would have the ability to um, hide a letter underneath it, which would be kind of kind of fun. Butterflies, spell it right. The I here is going to sit within the L. So they can be butterflies. I know the S. I'll show you what I'm doing. So that, that gives you a different feel than the welcome. Now we're going to do the ampersand, really tiny. We don't need a big ampersand. We'll do that in purplish brown. Butterflies in. Very, very thin. The word, the symbol here for and doesn't need to take up a lot of room. And maybe these. I talk to myself a lot when I do this. The dog is a very good listener. Questions do you have about any of this that I can answer while I knock out the word bees here? If we wanted to get started doing this, would we be best just to practice with a pen on a piece of paper, or should we use the brushes? Or the pen is going to be cheaper. Uh, you can go through the paper and the. Uh, so I would probably practice with a, a pen first until you get used to it. I wouldn't be nervous about it. I. I I would recommend that you refuse to be nervous. Is there, okay, I like that attitude. Is there, <laughs> is there a type of pen? Yes. Uh, there is a calligraphy pen. Uh, I can show you in a minute. I, I knew I would be asked, so I have one in my pocketbook. Uh, you can pick them up for about a dollar, dollar and a half. It's a marker, and it has the, the chisel end on it, just like the, uh, the brushes do. So everything that I said about the brush does apply to the calligraphy pen. All right, so there you have butterflies and bees. Now I want to give that more depth. So in a minute here, we're going to go back with a red. 
And I'm gonna take the red or blue. We could do a blue. How do you feel? Red, blue. Red. Red. Okay, we'll go back with the red. And the red will go near some of the letters and give it more depth. So this is a building process. It's a gradual process. The work never has to be done. Unless you happen to have a deadline. Um, yeah. I mean, it can be as creative, as ongoing as you want it to be. Uh, most sign painters are under deadlines, so they knock it out, and they knock it out quick. But if you're doing it for your own self, it wouldn't surprise me if you did one thing, and then next year you go back and say, oh, you know, maybe I want to change that a little bit. Just build on what you have. So how are you going to build on what you have? With a very fine sandpaper, you just want to rough up the finished coated varnish. The uh, sandpaper uh, can't go through the varnish, which is why it has to be a very fine coat of it. Um, but just rough it up and then you can put paint on top of it. If you decide to go ahead and do something like a uh, cooler, I had uh, one of the uh, fraternities want to put their fraternity Greek symbols on a, uh, on a cooler. What you want to do first is uh, that plastic is not going to adhere paint for a very long term at all. So you're going to have to take more than a fine sandpaper, probably a medium sandpaper, and really rough up that plastic so that the paint does adhere to it and then seal it with varnish. So a lot of the, the stuff is just putting a good basis uh, down, kind of like a foundation under your house. So you want to have a good foundation for just day level. Okay, so we're going to do red. Red is here. Alright, so now shall we uh, shall we make the red maybe with dots or lines? I mean very simple concept. What do you think? Dots. Dots. Dotting. Actually that's gonna be kind of fun. Alright, so we should be able to do it holding this up so you can see. Now, it doesn't need to just accent. Now, you can see it's really not that much different than the, the pinkish color, which is nice because it doesn't create a competition to the letters. It gives a depth to color and a depth to the design that you don't know how it was achieved because the color is so close. But the, the consistency to the uh, colors that are there will just give it kind of like a 3D effect that you really have to kind of analyze how is that a, a 3D. If we had done it in blue, it would have had a completely different feel. So part of your, your experimentation might be to try the different colors. The blue would have created a, a juxtaposition that would have uh, created tension and would not have been as um, peaceful that's what we're doing right now. This is just a very peaceful pink and red, they're close. and bees, I feel like putting some, some dots in there that kind of suggest flight. But um, can I have fun? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, so now we're going to go back and we're going to interfere a little bit with the letters. We don't want it to be something that makes it illegible, but accents what you've got going on there. So what I'm doing here is kind of adding a shadow without it being really a shadow. This is a very informal sign. If it were a, a very formal sign, it would be very measured, very controlled, but we're having fun. So there's no measurement. It's all just what does your eye look like it, it needs to see.
been a professional artist? Um, I, I that that's a I don't know of any artist that actually makes a good living doing artwork. But um, yes, I, I do artwork, but I have a job that actually pays for it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't count on the artwork sales. But yes, that's my background. That's what I was trained in. Okay, so the lot, one thing left to do now is uh, I'd like to splatter, just splatter some color on this. And this is kind of a, uh, I'm just looking around. Uh, let me get some plastic. Because in splattering, it actually creates a mess. And it's actually fun. But um, I use my, my brush. I get it really wet with a color and you just flick it. But it, and where it ends up is, is the design factor. So you can find these different techniques that, that get used to create a, a piece of work. You get one more piece of glass. So this is going to load up this brush here with a color and we just want to, you can shake it, you can flick it, just go ahead and it just adds a random color to it that you would not have. And then that piece will just get added to the, to the bottom of the other one here in a minute. <coughs> okay, now if we were, uh, I'm, I'm going to take some of that gold and highlight the letters now. So you can see it's been a building of, of the signs. Just random dots. So what type of uh, signs did you come in here wanting to, to do? Like yard signs or garden signs? Or is there some question that I can answer for you? Will I give this a little bit of depth with the gold? I like rocks. You like rocks? Yes. <laughs> rocks actually can work out really nicely. I mean, there are some very uh, pretty rocks that you can uh, find the, the grain within and highlight the grain of that rock. Or uh, at the end of your driveway, if you get a boulder, you can put a word on it. You can put the letter to your last name on the boulder. Uh, yeah, very, yeah, it's something that would be nice to, uh, you can incorporate that into the, I actually was thinking there is a fairy uh, garden that I have seen presented uh, through the, the master gardeners. And I was thinking today that some triangular rocks that I just picked up would be perfect for a gnome garden. So you buy those little gnomes that you can get and then these triangular rocks could be painted to either be trees or, or to be mountains. So you could use the rocks, the painted rocks, to create a scene in your garden. That's on the to-do list. You're not going to see that as a halfway point. That was nothing more than a thought on the way here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this welcome will probably end up being a stepping stone. Now I'm going to put some other colors on it. All right. So this is a the gold just gives it. It's the idea of depth, and uh, this is fun. This is completely different than something very formal. On windows? On windows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally different paint on windows if you, uh, okay. unless you want it to uh, come off. Do you want it to uh, 
adhere outside. You want it to yeah. adhere? Uh -huh. Glass is hard to paint yeah. on and have it stay on. Okay. You're probably going to need an oil base. Okay. Yeah. They actually have um, paint that is for uh, porcelain. Okay. One of the pictures of, of the stuff I, I've done, because uh, you can letter on anything, is a, is a plate. And you're welcome to this. I thought it'd be nice if you had um, some takeaways today other than your class. But you can buy porcelain, uh, I think it's paint. I don't think it's ink, I used it with a brush, you know, but it worked, whatever I did. Um, and yeah, I had uh, the, local, the local art store in uh, Murphy's Royal Square. Moxie. Moxie's, yes, they have porcelain. Is it? Is it Moxie? Yeah, and they moved to Arlington Street. Yeah, they're across from the. Uh, okay. They're across from. So what? Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, yeah, they're across from the city complex there, the library city complex. Never really known what that was. Okay, so there we go. This is this is finished to the degree that I would, I would say that will work. So, we can re-glue it if you want before you leave. So um, will you spray it with acrylic acid? When it dries. When it dries. When it dries, yeah. We'll re-glue it and then it will just get sprayed with a, a varnish. Do you always use varnish? Um, I use some type of a varnish. Oh, Sometimes, yes, you can use a poly polyurethane as a varnish. Yeah, um, it's, the, sometimes it's a Krylon, that brand, this brand I just picked up, I wanted to know when it worked. I mean, they make great watercolors. So with that being said, I thought they would make a great varnish. So that's, pre that's pretty much what we've, what we've done today. Do you feel the difference between the two sides? You know, one's very formal, feels very welcoming, and one is kind of chaotic uh, and fun. So just very different styles, done with the same materials, and uh, just a different message that comes across. So as you, uh, as you drive down the highway, <coughs> check out the vehicles and what they do for artwork on those. Um, looking through magazines. You can create what I always call the swipe file, and that's exactly what it is. You're uh, swiping ideas from some other artists. So if you find some lettering that you really like, uh, just just cut it out or you know do a screenshot of it and uh, hold on to it so that when you go to do something, you have that to reference that you can say, okay, I like this and I want to use that idea here. You're not copying because that, that's an infringement, um, but you are borrowing the idea. The idea has inspired you to do something of your own. Yes, ma'am. I enjoy making I would look at Michael's for a transfer. Um, I have a friend that does it on material, not onto wood, but I wouldn't surprise me at all if the transfer would be applicable to wood. If you do it on a cake. Could you yeah. do it and then put shellac over it? Put the picture yeah. on and then shellac it? Yeah, you could. Shellac <coughs> or varnish, they're, they're the same thing. It's just different degrees of the intensity of, of urethane. Well, do you, do you have any questions? Would you like to come up? Um, I'm open to whatever you would like to do at this point since we have accomplished what I wanted to do. So when you want For what? Depends upon how much time it takes, how much effort. But I was selling that sign because I had to buy materials and I had to go.